I've built this channel on the love of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, the love of Hero, the love of Crystal Beast, Cyber Dragon, Ancient Gear, all these really fun GX decks, but I never really do hero videos. And in today's video, that's exactly what we're doing. Today, guys, I'm gonna be showing you a hero deck profile for the June 2024 format. Of course, going into July as well. Battles of the Legend is coming out soon and it's gonna introduce some very powerful new support for some existing decks. And that's why we built today's hero to combat against those kind of decks. Now, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like and subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. I upload pretty much every single day here on the channel. So you guys need to check it out. A short every single day five days a week and then you guys get videos like this one so make sure to check it out but with that being said hero is up for today's video i'm excited so let's get right into it so to get things started we are of course playing three elemental hero stratos i personally like playing three i know a lot of people have cut it down to two but i personally like playing three and the main reason for this is because it's an elemental hero name one it's consistency of course which is really important but it being an elemental hero name is really good because your infernal rage specifically needs two elemental hero monsters and having that extra name is very very important because it helps you get into this right if you draw the second stratos and you have hero lives you can hero lives for the first one if this gets stopped with an imperm let's say you have the other one as a normal summon but on top of that if you do open with your stratos you can hero lives another card and the other card that you can hero lives that's really powerful is shadow mist being able to hero live shadow mist means you're going to be able to catch your mass change to your hand and getting your mass change to your hand is really really good because then if you do have your shadows you normal summon straddles so you try to imperm it you have your mass change for this now to dodge those imperms right on top of that if they don't have an imperm they don't have a hand trap then you just have that mass change ready to go for your opponent's turn summon something like dark law which is absolutely insane right so two shadow mist then we're playing the one liquid soldier you only need one so one liquid soldier and one neos we are no longer playing honest neos Although I really personally like Honest Neos, I decided to cut it just because it's a card that is really good going second, yes. And this deck wants to go first. So drawing it in your open hand sucks. We're just playing the regular one Brick Neos. Although you, you do draw him, he's not that bad because you can make uh, your Inferno Rage and then you can combo from there. But you ideally don't want to draw this. You'd rather, you'd rather search this, right? So the one Neos, of course, and this rounds it off for the Elemental Heroes. Then, of course, we're playing the Vision Hero Package. So three Ferris, two Vion, and two Increase. I wish you could get away with playing one, but you can't because if you draw the one, you, you can't do anything. You honestly can't do anything anything with drawing the one so you have to be playing the two and uh, i'm actually playing more than 40 i think i'm at 43 cards is where i'm at and i think 43 card is really good because again your bricks like neos bricks like increase you don't want to draw these and this deck is so consistent anyways that it doesn't really matter if you are playing more than 40 right so whether you draw your shadows hero lives fusion destiny there's so many different ways to start your combos that playing more than 40 is actually better so you don't see these which is really nice right speaking of your destiny hero stuff we are playing three destiny hero malicious malicious of course being back at three is absolutely insane the consistency of this card is crazy by the way peep that uh astro phoenix signed card shout out shout out astro phoenix this is actually really cool but yeah three malicious of course one denier one plasma plasma of course is really good for going first but the reason you actually play plasma is because it does help you get into your fusion destiny a second time although now you have malicious at three which makes it a lot easier but uh, plasma on top of him just being a really good card to end your boards on you do sometimes need a level six or higher monster for your second uh, the fusion destiny if you do resolve a second fusion destiny i should say so plasma becomes really really good for that right because it's just an extra name that you can dump but that is it for the monsters over here that's all the monster count you don't want to play more than this i think the engine is already big enough you'd rather play more consistency which i'm going to show you guys next so one really big buff to this deck was the fact that the ban list put anti-spell to one putting anti-spell to one means the consistency of this deck is always going to go through we do have three a hero lives of course because you're playing so many spell cards right so that's that's why i was talking about anti-spell because a lot of your consistency is spell and anti-spell being to one means that you're pretty much safe so three a hero lives this card is absolutely insane three fusion destiny as well this card is insane as well so one card combo one card combo is one card oh this is not really one card combo but this is actually one card combo because sending your denier and your mali to the graveyard is absolutely insane so fusion destiny absolutely mandatory at three one miracle fusion one polymerization i wanted to play two polymerization i decided to cut it to one just because wonder driver is so good at getting these back but you can argue playing two is very very important as well drawing this card is insane because if they stop your vion it can be pretty difficult if you don't get the polymerization so playing the second one can be pretty valuable but i like playing the one on one and then we're also playing two mass change i wouldn't want to play more than two mass change i think two is perfectly fine you don't need to be playing three especially in a deck like this one drawing it is not insane like it's not bad i'm not gonna lie but it's not also insane if you're drawing multiples of this so i just like playing two it's searchable off your shadow miss and like i said i'm playing three shadows so playing three shadows means i have more odds to see a shadows which means i have more odds to special summon shadow miss with the hero lives right which is really good so two mass change only one rota of course it's uh, generic and then we're playing the one favorite contact this card is absolutely insane honestly summoning shining neo swingman on your opponent's turn is so broken so you have to be playing the one future uh one favorite contact it's just so so strong right so one favorite contact and then one foolish burial 
if uh, this is not enough consistency, this is, let's say you open Mali and you are Ferris, right? This way, essentially, is going to let you do is you send your denier. Sending your denier is really good. This also sends Shadow Mist. Sending Shadow Mist means you can search another hero monster. So that's really good as well. So Foolish Burial is really good for consistency. So that is it for all our consistency cards. I guess this is not consistency, but this is a card that you're always going to end on with your combos. Moving into the non-engine now, we are playing a decent amount of hand traps. We're also playing board breakers, a little bit of both. I think it makes a lot of sense in this deck. So three Ash, three Imperm, I'm on two Droplet, two Talent, and one Called by the Grave, okay? So the reason I'm playing these cards specifically, why we're not playing all hand traps, why we're not playing all board breakers, is because I feel like in this deck, it does get a little bit of value off your opponent actually having a board. Because being able to, like, let's say Droplet. Droplet, I think, is absolutely insane, right? So let's say a card like Droplet. If you are going to go, let's say you're going second, right? You go Activate Hero Lives. And and then they want to chain something they want to you know whatever it is that they want to do uh let's say they don't even do anything at all you can chain droplets send a hero lives and they get an opponent's monster this is going to resolve then summon your straddle so it's really good in that sense and it works so well with all of your spell cards because you're playing so many power spells that this card is absolutely insane i really like talents i think talents in this format is absolutely broken going second even going first because so many play people are playing hand traps this going first is absolutely insane as well that's why i'm playing two and two i could have just played three droplet and cut this because i would have been at think at 42 cards then but i decided to play these because these are actually really good in, in a hand trap format like this one where they're always pretty much live imagine uh your opponent uses a hand trap after they use a hand trap you use this rip another card out of their hand and then you're ending on a dark law so they're starting off their turn with two cards down and ending on a dark law means if they search anything you're gonna get rid of another card right so absolutely insane in this deck and that's why i like it so non-engine i think this is pretty good I, I wouldn't change this up moving on to the extra deck over here i think it's pretty standard for a lot of hero extra decks so you're playing the one infernal rage one of the sunrise one ab zero one shining neos one wake up and one dark law this is pretty much the most standard stuff that you guys are going to see i'm only playing one dark law i wouldn't want to play two i think one is perfectly fine i'm playing the one blast of course blast to dodge uh, your hand traps of course with stratos is really good this i was really debating on playing uh, Divine Wind for the Tenpai matchup, but I decided not to. Even though it sounds cool and sounds gimmicky, they could just make Kubel and Kubel just pops a card and then you pop the Divine Wind. I think Divine Wind can be destroyed by card effects, right? I think it only can't be destroyed by battle. So that's that's the thing, right? So I decided to go with Blast. I think Blast is really good when you make it as well. We're playing on one Acid, of course, because if you mass change your Ab Zero into Acid, you break every board, right? This is such an insane combo. So that's why I'm playing these two. Uh, one Dystopia and one DPE. I think DPE is a card that I definitely could have played two of. This is a card that I wanted to play two of, but I actually decided not to and i think i'm only playing the one because dystopia is so good into time and uh you never want to lose the time right so dystopia is a really good second option for you and it only needs two destiny hero monsters it doesn't require like a level six or higher or anything specific so two destiny heroes makes this it's really really good and then of course we're playing uh the two cross crusader one wonder driver one infernal divisor and one decimator i think this is kind of all you need you could argue instead of playing two cross you play two wonder instead wonder is so good getting back your polymerization especially in my build where i'm only playing one but uh wonder is just absolutely insane card i always want to end on this card because if you go pop your uh, dpe pop wake up and then you're going to summon your dpe back essentially if you summon your back to your wonder driver zone this is going to trigger again on your opponent's turn which is really nice right so that's why i really like wonder driver this card is absolutely insane and maybe you could play this at two but if you play this at two i'll just cut one cross crusader moving on to the side deck i'm going to always say this in all my videos side deck is always going to be up to personal preference and it's always going to matter what your locals is looking like if your locals is a bunch of combo players make sure to side for combo if it's a bunch of back row players make sure to side for back row it's really really important this is just a skeleton that you guys can use to to build your side deck right so i like three nibiru nibiru is just so good right now especially with baron and savage gone this card is so good and pretty much live into every matchup so three nibiru three ghost ogre i think ghost ogre is really good into the tenpai matchup and you need to be playing something for tenpai so uh that's why i'm playing three ghost ogre also i need some qcrs in these man this card is just really nice but yeah i i, I want to play some qcrs i don't want the supers anymore but anyways this card is really really cool uh we're playing two thrusts the reason we're playing two thrusts is because in the main deck of course you have stuff like talent you have stuff like imperm you have stuff like fusion destiny that you can search you have your miracle fusion a lot of the engine you can search off a of thrust as well but i'm also citing a bunch of thrust targets because going second you can play cards like harpy's feather duster and lightning storm right so going second being able to side in your board breakers depending on the matchup is very very powerful especially back row matchups like you don't need droplets droplets is not good into back row matchups so you just side out the two droplets for two of this then you can side out something like the call by the grave for this um if you're going second you can side out the, your uh, favorite contact as well really important so that's why i like playing these going second cards but thrust is not only good going second it's actually really good going first specifically because we are playing 3d barrier being able to search for your d barrier is so good because not only when you're going first you side this in you side this in with thrust so you effectively have five copies of d barrier and it's just so good into branded it's so good into the tempi matchup it's so good into so many different matchups that's why i like playing d barrier and being able to search d barrier is absolutely insane and then lastly the 15th card one rivalry of the warlords this card is i mean 
of course you're playing a warrior deck this deck only makes warriors and uh rivalry is just so good into a lot of decks so i like playing the one rivalry of course it's just a one of seeing this is very unlikely but uh it's still a very powerful card another thing you could do here as well instead of rivalry is play like a daruma cannon and you can thrust for daruma cannon if you really need going first as well which is really nice right so i just really like rivalry i think it's more uh, standard i think it's more generic but uh daruma cannon is another good option especially because it's a thrust target so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that is my take on hero for the june 2024 format this deck is still really fun yes i'm gonna be honest with you it's still in the tier two rogue tier kind of decks it's not like tier one or anything however some of the things that this deck can do is absolutely insane and on top of that it has it's just a, such a fun deck it's a gx deck guys Jaden's literally right there so like Come on now, we gotta do Hero on the channel. But thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload pretty much every single day here on the channel. So if you guys wanna stay tuned to all of that, make sure to subscribe. So I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you guys all for watching. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.